Hey there, welcome to the Marketing Happy Hour podcast, where each week we're learning career-defining advice, powerful social media strategies, unique creative tips, groundbreaking influencer marketing tactics, and more from marketing experts that represent some of the world's leading brands. Let's dive in, grab a drink, and join your hosts, Cassie and Erica, for this week's episode. It came to a point where I was like, I am so burnt out. I'm exhausted. Honestly, like protect your your mental health at all costs. Like I know it's scary when you're a business owner and you want to just like pour everything and more into what you're doing. But like you can't pour from an empty glass. Like we've all heard that. And I think there's like nothing more true about being a business owner than that statement. (laughs) We're diving deep into the creator economy this week with a conversation with Kristen Busquette, founder of Your Social Mate. Kristen's heart behind her business is to equip creators with information to be successful in their craft while building a powerful business. Kristen's been around the block with building her own businesses and growing her own platforms as a creator, and she's sharing her story and insights with us today. More specifically, we talk social, podcasting, and newsletters and how to use those powerful tools to grow your online business. Kristen also shares PR tips for individuals and brands looking to land placements and why she recommends following journalists on Twitter and LinkedIn to build relationships and assert your expertise on those platforms. She also shares how she avoids burnout when wearing multiple hats as a professional. I'm excited for you to join us for today's conversation. So grab your favorite drink and let's get into it. Hey, Kristen, how are you? I'm great. Thank you guys so much for having me. You are so welcome. We're so excited to have you on. You literally are aesthetic queen. I'm just (laughs) going to say this. So the first time I saw your brand, I was like, oh my gosh, we need to have her on. Like, I absolutely love everything you do. You recently got married, which is exciting. So we'll talk about all the things, but before we really get into today's conversation, uh, just got to ask a question that we always ask all our guests. Kristen, what is in your glass this afternoon? In my glass now and in my glass 99% of the time is water, but yeah. I have it. It's a little spicy, okay? Ooh. Not just plain water. Um, I use this stuff called Ultima and it's Ooh. like a little powder that you put in and it's electrolytes, but it tastes like lemonade. So it's basically like I'm drinking lemonade all day. It has no sugar in it, Love it. but I'm getting my electrolytes, you know, but I'm actually yes. just drinking water. It's great. I love it. Health and wellness yes. queen. We love yes. That. yes. And is that a Stanley cup I see too? Yes. I splurged because I was like so sick of continuously filling up a glass of water. I was like, yes. fine, I'll just get the cute water bottle and go for it. And I love it. It really is as great as everyone talks about. Amazing. I want to get one of those. (laughs) Just do it. (laughs) Um, well I actually, so this is my first recording in my new apartment and Cassie brought me a housewarming gift of Onda. It's funny because we talked about Onda pretty much in every episode of our first season of the podcast. I was always drinking Onda during this question. Um, it's a tequila seltzer. So if you know Shay Mitchell, she was on like Pretty Little Liars and yeah. she's like, so she has like so many brands now. This is one of them. Um, and it is incredible. And Cassie just tried it for the first time after hearing me talk about it for like a year and a <laughs> half. So um cheers to that yeah it was about time cheers I love that (laughs) amazing well Kristen we would just love for our marketing happy hour listeners to hear kind of your career journey up into this point just from a brief look at your LinkedIn it looks like you've held some amazing roles so we just want to hear a little bit about that before we move on for further in our questions Yeah, I'll give you the quick version because I feel like I have bounced around so much. I'm definitely the type of person, like I like to try a million different things and and just like, I I can't settle in one thing ever. So um, I've definitely been around the block in terms of career changes. Um, I actually started a blog back in 2008. I lived in Massachusetts. I was very young and I liked, you know, fashion, aka like Abercrombie and yes. <laughs> at that time. So I'd have my mom take photos of me in like my backyard. Um, and I, I started posting them there, but this was not a career. I'm just planting the seed for the rest. Yes. Um, so 
I, I basically, after college, um, I was working at Sephora. Um, I was also starting a photography business, um, kind of unintentionally. I just was taking pictures of my friends and I would do their makeup and take their photos. And before I knew it, I had people asking me like, can you take my senior photos? And I was like, don't really know exactly what I'm doing, but sure. Like, yeah, give <laughs> yeah. me $20 and like, I'll do it for you. So I, I, unintentionally started a photography business and I was a photographer, um, for years. And I mean, I still definitely dabble. Um, but that was my full-time job for a really long time. I was doing boudoir photography, wedding photography, you know, families, high school seniors, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then I also at that time, because I was working at Sephora, I would like do people's makeup and then also take their photos. So eventually I ended up kind of starting a business where we were doing hair, makeup, and photography. Um, it ended up expanding into a boutique, a full service salon. Wow. So in 2019, I had a 4,000 square foot studio. We did a uh, photography upstairs. We had a boutique in the front. Um, and then we had full service salon and spa. It was like a, a whole thing. Wow, that's so um, cool. It was a lot of fun, but eventually I... I just didn't feel comfortable there anymore. I was working with a bunch of girls. I had a business partner who didn't pull her weight and we didn't get along great after a while. And so eventually I was like, I'm so unhappy here. I can't do this any longer. So I actually ended up selling that business um, back in 2019. And then since then, I've been really pursuing social media because I've had that blog this whole time throughout this yeah. whole journey. And I just kind of didn't really think I could ever turn it into something where it was actually a job. Um, and obviously the blog is, you know, turned into Instagram, turned into TikTok and all of the other things. But back in 2019, I started, when I left that business, I was working with um, clients as like a social media manager, influencer campaign manager. So I really got a peek at the life of people who were hiring these influencers, which was a really cool experience because I was also on the other side as an influencer. So before I knew it, I had people on Instagram asking me all the time, like, oh, you're an influencer, you know, manager, you're an influencer campaign manager. What do I do if this happens? Or like, what happens if I do this? And mm -hmm. so I was getting so many questions and I realized no one knew what they were doing from an influencer standpoint. And so eventually I started coaching creators and that's just kind of blossomed into what it is today where I am a content creator and an influencer. I work with brands in that capacity, but I also coach creators and actually teach them how to monetize. Um, and we have a podcast, all of the things. Yes. So it's been a crazy journey. That's amazing. And so I want to dive into social mate specifically a little bit here. And so just tell us a little bit about what inspired you to start that business. I know you've kind of been around the block with creating businesses, building them, which is amazing. And I'm sure lent so much to this business specifically that we want to talk about, but just tell us about that and what you love most about the work you're currently doing. Yeah. I mean, I, again, like never knew that I was going to be making a career out of this. I was just helping people in the DMS for so long. And then I realized mm -hmm. At a certain point, I was like, I'm spending like a lot of time in my DMs answering yeah. like the same questions over and over again. And before I knew it, it was like half my time was spent there not getting paid. And then half my time was like spent actually doing my job. And it came to a point where I was like, I think I can get paid for this. You know, mm -hmm. like enough people are looking at me as an expert, clearly, if they're coming to me for the questions when there's other people they could be going to. Um, and and so I started off by just doing coaching calls and from there, I realized on those calls, again, I was saying the same things over and over and over again. And so I was like, I have to just put this in a course and then, you know, yeah. go from there. Um, and so we had a course for a really long time, but then I missed the one-on-one -on -one aspect with people. So we're actually, um, right now we have a membership program, which is, I think the the perfect kind of culmination of everything I've wanted to do where I do one-on-one -on -one coaching in the group. I'm able to like actually hang out and have Zoom calls with everyone they have a community, they have resources. So it's it's really the a course and like one-on-one -on -one coaching kind of mixed together. And I'm so happy with, with where it is now. It's just so cool to be able to like hang out with other creators and, and really show them that like everyone is going through the same things and like we can all help each other through all of it. Um, my favorite part is really just being able to see people like come in and, and not know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like a few months in they're like professionals, you know, they're teaching other people how to do yeah. stuff. So it's cool to watch for sure. Absolutely. I love too how your business has solely 
come from this need that you've seen people in the marketplace have, which is super cool. Um, I, I tell people all the time, you know, everyone's like, I want to start a business. I want to do something. And I was like, well, first of all, start with your expertise and where you feel like you're helping people the most. So that's amazing to hear that you've pretty much done that. And so I'm curious, obviously social media is right up in your wheelhouse, but what other marketing channels have worked well for you or are you utilizing to promote your business and reach new consumers? Yeah, most of what we do really is through social media. We're on all of the platforms. Um, We do have a newsletter too, which I think is incredibly important for creators. We've heard people say this time and time again, like you don't own social media, you don't own anything, you know, that's there, it could go away tomorrow. And so you want to obviously still have ways that you can reach that audience. So I have a newsletter. We actually built it up this year and it's been really great to see how many people actually, you know, like respond to the newsletters and, and are clicking on things that we're sharing there. Um, so I'm always trying to find ways to improve that. Um, I also like to do a lot of in-person kind of events or panels and things like that, where I can, I can actually talk with people in person. I feel like being in social media for so long, it's, interesting to see like how much you don't have any sort of like actual like human connection Mm -hmm. in real life and I'm like I miss actually like having a conversation with people in person and so um I've now that you know the pandemic has slowed down we have in-person events again and so I've been trying to do a lot of like speaking engagements and things like that to to market our brand but also just to to network Yeah. yeah Absolutely. That's amazing. Well, and I'm curious too, to hear more about your coaching offering. And so we're looking to launch coaching for career marketing career specifically um, in 2023. So just curious, like what's worked for you in terms of how you build that out the process with clients? Uh, What does that look like? Yeah. I mean, over the last two years, uh, we've been in business at social media for a little over two years now. I have literally learned so much in the last two years. It's, it's been crazy. I've done so much trial and error. Again, we started off by, you know, just doing those coaching calls. And I, I found that I really liked talking to people, but then like when we started doing all coaching calls, I was like, okay, I'm literally on the phone you know, six hours of the day and I don't have time to get other things done. So it's been definitely like a process of me trying to figure out for my schedule and my mental well-being and like how much I want to actually be working versus like, you know, building other things. Um, That has been a learning curve to figure out like exactly what works for me there. Um, So I feel like you guys will definitely have to try and do some trial and error. Like, you know, we had um, with our course, it was like a mentorship program. So it was basically a course, but you'd also get like one-on-one calls as well. Um, And it was great because instead of me getting on calls with people and again, saying the same things over and over again, people could watch the course first Mm -hmm. That's actually nice. implement it. And then right. when they had all those questions, I think that was a really great way to go about it because, you know, like if you don't have the opportunity to ask questions about something after you already try and go do it, you know, I think that leaves you as a student, like still a little lost, which yeah. obviously taking a course, that's like kind of the opposite of what you want. <laughs> um, but again, like after kind of going through that shift of like, okay, like I can't be on the phone all day. The course thing is working though. I I tried to figure out like what's an option that I can spend less time dedicating myself to this. Like, of course, I'm I'm still working with my students every single day and everything, but I just couldn't spend hour long phone Mm -hmm. calls, you know, on the phone all day, every day. So the membership is really nice because I'm able to actually like coach people on my own time. You know, I spend an hour at the beginning of the day, hour at the end of the day, going in there, interacting, building that up, putting in new resources, um, you know, planning different things. But then it's nice too, because it's a little bit more almost passive, I guess, where it's like not one-on-one necessarily all the time, but it's like one to many. So Mm -hmm. it's a great way for me as a business owner to kind of like have an unlimited amount of income that I can really make because I only have to put it out once and I can have as many people in the membership as as could possibly be. And I still kind of do around the same amount of work. Um, So again, it's just been such a learning curve of trying to figure out what works. But I think for me, the biggest thing was figuring out like for my mental well-being and my scheduling, what worked because that was very different now 
from what I thought it would be, you know, like a couple years ago. Sure. Yeah. That sounds like it could get to be taxing a little bit on just like yeah. your overall well-being and yeah. just trying to manage your time. So I totally right. understand that and appreciate your advice. We are just thinking on starting out um, in 2023 with some coaching adventures. So we'll yeah. see how that goes yeah. and we'll do some testing and learning and hopefully yeah. we figure it out the way that you have. So it sounds <laughs> great. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're also like very huge podcast nerds over here. We both love listening to podcasts. We have our own podcast. I never thought we would have our own podcast, but here we are. <laughs> um, and so I just want to hear about the beginning of why and how you initially started your podcast. So I, I don't know why, but I've just always wanted to have one. I love, like my favorite part of my job is talking to other people, you know, like getting to have conversations with people who are going through the same things as I am, who understand the things that I'm going through. Um, and so I've loved having conversations, but I was finding like so many of the conversations I was having where I was like, dang, like this is good info, you know, <laughs> like people should hear this. Yeah. Um, and so I always thought about having a podcast and I always made like a thousand excuses as to why I, I couldn't. I was like, I don't know how to have a podcast. Like, I don't want to go buy a mic. Like, I don't yeah. even know which mic I need to get, you know? So I never did Um, until I had talked about it for so long that one day it was last October. I literally sat down and I was like, you're recording an episode right now. Like we're just doing it. We're going for it. it. I didn't have a name. I didn't have a plan, like literally nothing. Um, I went to Best Buy, just got like, I asked the guy, which <laughs> pod podcast mic is good for me. You know, like he just gave me one. I trusted him and you know, here we are with old trusty here. Love um, it. And yeah, I, I literally sat down. Um, I had my, my husband in it with me because he also, um, his business, he runs through social media. So he understands a lot of the same struggles. Mm -hmm. First episode was just us like kind of talking about social media and you know, it, it kind of just blossomed from there. But I, I literally made every excuse in the book until finally I was like, just shut up and sit down and <laughs> record this. Like I'm not listening to myself talk about this any longer. I love that. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. We had a little bit of a similar experience of just like having really great conversations and then trying to find an outlet for other people to be yeah. tuned into them. Uh, we started on clubhouse where we were having some great yeah. conversations and like there was at the time, no way to record those mm -hmm. conversations. So we were like, we need to pivot this and yeah. turn it into something <laughs> that other people can benefit from as well. So I totally totally identify with that for sure. Yeah. And especially like we didn't have any equipment in the beginning. Like I didn't have a mic. I think you already had a mic. Not at the very beginning. Oh really? No, it was like <laughs> us literally talking into our phones and like sending our friends uh, a little text invite oh, like, yeah. hop on this app. It was just very, wow. Un it was funny. Unorganized. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yes, I completely, and we, we didn't know what we were doing. We yeah. still, I mean, don't know exactly what we're doing. But... <laughs> That's like the fun of it though. Like you're never exactly. going to like go into something and know exactly what you're right, doing. Right. I think the point is that, you know, like you learn along the way, you figure out what works and what doesn't um but side note are you guys still using clubhouse no no I Me either and I yeah. want to but I don't I know, know why I, know. I just like can't bring myself to do it I know. I know I just I would love to see stats of like who's still on that platform because I other know. platforms came out with audio um like right. offerings and so I don't know if people are still utilizing it the way that they were back in 2021 yeah. like early 2021 I don't know yeah I don't think people are, but I know there are like definitely still people on. I see updates for it all the mm -hmm. time of like Clubhouse is coming out with this and that. Yeah. Maybe we'll take it back on one day. Yeah, <laughs> well, we should do something. Yeah. We'll do something combined. Well, I'm down. We've been talking about that. We're like, we need to just do one reunion with a bunch of people. I was a guest on a Clubhouse session last week, which is so bizarre because I hadn't touched the app in like a okay. year. And yeah. it was kind of fun because you're... I mean, it's just voice, right? So it's podcasting, yeah. but like podcast video is a thing now too. So I can just pop it on. I can be in my sweatpants, my pajamas <laughs> and it's, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of nice. So, um, yeah, still have, still have love for the platform, but yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just a quick question for anybody who's out there that's thinking about starting a podcast, what would you recommend? I know we both kind of talked about trial and error and just kind of figuring it out as you go. But now that you've had a little bit of experience for anybody out there looking to start a podcast, what equipment should you get? Do you need 
like crazy amazing equipment or can you just go like you said to Best Buy and get the the microphone that the man recommends <laughs> um, or like where should you market your podcast where are you marketing your podcast all the things if somebody's just starting what do they need to know yeah earlier this year I actually took a podcast course it was like a podcast mentorship um, and I learned a lot first things first you definitely don't need any fancy equipment I think my mic was a hundred dollars and like you definitely don't even need one that's a hundred dollars right um I actually just watched uh part of my friend Tom's podcast um his podcast is called creators are brands it's amazing um awesome. and he was talking to people that have like a top one percent podcast and they literally use the cheapest one they found on Amazon so yeah. like you definitely Definitely do not need fancy equipment by any means. Um, when it comes to marketing the podcast, one thing that I learned that was kind of like, uh, like a mind blown situation for me, I was sharing my podcast like on my Instagram stories like once a week. I share it like here and there once a week, um, in different places, but. I was always like, why am I not getting like the views that I expect? Like, why am I not getting the listens that I expect? And my, my mentor at the time, he was like, you literally post it once a week. Like, do you know how many people look at your stories yeah. like yeah. in one day? You know, you need to be posting it every single day. Are you going to bombard people? Maybe a little bit, but guess what? They can literally just hit the next slide and like, keep yeah. going. they're not yeah. going to get mad at you and unfollow, mm -hmm. but like you can't like you're underselling yourself, you know, and you almost like don't even realize it because you make excuses as to why you don't want to share it too much. But right. um, yeah, so I think like oversharing, honestly, I think is is underutilized for most podcasters. I love that. Um, oversharing, thing... oversharing is underutilized. I yes. like it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. Yeah. One other thing that I, I learned that again was like pretty interesting to me. Um, podcasts can be a little bit difficult to monetize um, in terms of like, you know, getting sponsors and things like that. Obviously they look for very specific, like number of views, especially if you're getting started right off the bat, you're probably not going to be able to find sponsors. Um, a lot of people use podcasts to monetize as part of their funnel. So, mm -hmm. you know, like maybe people find your podcast and then you get them to join into your Facebook group and then they go from your Facebook group into your offer. But that's a really great way to monetize is getting people to go through that funnel starting at your podcast, um, you know, and that is a better way to monetize, I guess, than just like waiting for you to to get sponsors. Because again, like totally. it might be a little while before that happens. Yeah. Totally, totally. We've run into that where yeah. we've been in conversations with a brand and it's all about the numbers and it is yep. so hard to like, it's so hard to demonstrate the value of a podcast listen because that's right. somebody sitting down to talk to someone that they really trust for like 45 ish minutes. Mm -hmm. Like that value is huge. They're probably going to convert, but it's hard when the people that are um, in charge of advertising dollars are thinking about it in the same way they think about social media of just being like, oh, that's one little follower that might right. see the content, but not really engage with it. Mm -hmm. No podcast listeners are like very very engaged and so yeah, I think that's yeah. something that's like a communication gap that we're running into mm -hmm. every now and then as well um yeah. yeah that's a really great point I mean like I only know a handful of people that I would really want to like sit down and have a 45 minute yeah. conversation yeah. with you know so know. it really does say a lot if someone's willing to sit down and, and spend that time with you they could be doing yeah. anything else totally absolutely for sure well I'm curious too, and we started to talk a little bit about this, but in your opinion, what makes podcasting to you a great opportunity for um, brands looking to advertise and connect with audiences in new ways? I mean, podcasting is is huge. And I don't think a lot of people realize it fully just yet, especially with like video podcasting becoming like more and more of a thing. Yep. Podcasts are are most people are listening to podcasts, you know, like it's it's a huge form of advertising. I think people who don't listen to podcasts have like no idea how, how big the world of podcasting is, right. but like once you're in it, you're, you really realize there are so many podcasts out there. Again, people who listen to podcasts are like diehard going to spend hours of their life there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, like bringing up the point of like, it really is so much more valuable than just like an Instagram follower, you know, especially like 
if we were to look even like Instagram versus TikTok, you know, it's kind of a similar situation where like someone with 20K on Instagram and someone with 20K on TikTok, like it's a totally different, different story, yeah. you know? <laughs> and like thinking about like, you know, 20K podcast listeners is even bigger than what I, you know, Instagram, I would say. Um, so like the value really is there, but I think the difficult part for advertisers is like, it's still kind of like an unconventional way of advertising, mm-hmm. like oh, yeah. the tracking of the stats and like all of that. Like, it's still not as like cut and dry as something like a Facebook ad or, you know, an Instagram story where you can see clicks and all of that. So I think it's just a little bit scary for some brands to like yeah. get their toes into it. Um, but again, I, I think in the next few years, it's only going to get bigger and better because more and more great podcasts are coming out more and more companies that we know and love are starting like podcast networks, yeah. like LinkedIn and all of these yeah. things. Um, you know, so like, it's, it's only going to get bigger. Brands will become more comfortable with it. And again, like it, it really is so much more valuable than just someone who's like scrolling by you on social media. People have to make like an active choice to, to sit listen. down and listen to you, yeah. you know? Totally. Completely agree with that. That's one thing we've been doing a lot of chatting with other friends that are in the marketing world, just going into the new year. And that's one thing that we've been talking about is like brands setting aside a budget to kind of like play with and just like get in there and utilize in new, interesting ways to get their, the story of their brand out. And I think podcast is an amazing way to do that. Um, We presented to a college campus, like their marketing class. And um, we were talking, I think there was like an article, I'm going to butcher this, but um, I think there was an article that it said like podcasting is projected to become, I think like a $4 billion industry Mm by 2024. And so right now, I believe it, or at the time that the article published, um, it was like 2 million Mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, 2 billion. Um, so all of that to say it is still like an up and coming platform for sure. For sure. sure. Yeah. Like once people know about podcasting and they get into it, like you're in it, you know, like you can't not listen to them after. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, well, shifting gears just a a little bit here. I, we talked a lot about podcasting and kind of what you got, you're up to, but I know that, um, you've been featured in a lot of online publications and one of my specialties is PR. So, um, I would just love to hear from your point of view. What are some PR tips for our listeners looking to land those placements, um, for their brands or just their self as a personal brand. Um, Do you have any tips around that? Yeah, this is kind of the same situation with as like a creator building relationships with brands that you want to work with. Every single outlet that I've worked with, every journalist that I've worked with has literally been from me just like introducing myself (laughs) and being like, hi, I exist. Like if you need anything, let me know. Um, Journalists, any kind of like publications are huge on Twitter um, Mm -hmm. and LinkedIn. So getting on those platforms, staying active on those platforms and kind of like asserting your expertise on those platforms, I think is going to be a great way to, you know, establish yourself as an expert. Um, But again, like on Twitter, you'll see all the time, if you follow the journalists that you want to hopefully work with, there are very, you know, very often times that you're going to see a tweet that says, hey, I'm working on a story for this. I'm really looking for like this person who does this and this, like, does anyone know anyone? And so whether you're recommending someone else, but again, like kind of getting your foot in the door, like, hey, I'm here to help. Like, um, but also you could just be like, hey, that's me. Like, what do you need help with? Um, Again, literally every time that I've, I've been featured in anything, it's been me answering requests like that or now because it's happened quite a few times I've been able to like actually keep up with a lot of the journalists that I work with frequently on again LinkedIn Twitter whenever they're posting like a new article I'll read it I'll write my comments my thoughts so that I'm a little bit more top of mind so that when they do have something coming up then it happens almost every time that I comment something they'll be like hey in my dms yeah. what's up you know like i'm actually working on this story i'm glad you commented on this you want to get on a call and like you know awesome. talk to me about this so um i think it's just putting yourself out there and building relationships just like pretty much everything most other things mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah that's an that's a really good tip is uh just staying engaged and involved with people and even just commenting like you said on things that they're putting out into the world like that does make you top of mind yeah. that's a really good yeah. tip Absolutely. Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, which I'm sure that tip could go a lot into more of the creator space too, kind of like what oh, you yeah. were talking about. But 
you obviously, as you said earlier in this episode, you are a creator yourself and uh, do a lot of brand partnerships. And so I'm curious what that experience has been like for you, but also because we have a lot of brands listening in, people from the brand side, what do you look for in a brand when you're trying to decide whether or not to do a partnership with them? That is a great question. Um, A lot of the times when I'm approached by brands, the kind of make it or break it for me is, is this a brand that's like open to actually hearing what I have to say? Um, I think a lot of brands forget too that this is a 50-50 partnership. You know, if you're hiring me and you're saying we need to do it this way and I just know with my audience it's not going to work, yeah. I'm going to say that's not going to work. But so many brands are like, well, that's what we want to do. You know, like sucks. That's, <laughs> that's what we're well, doing. Then, and I'm, I'm like, okay, now. Well, that's like, you know, like... And it sucks if you get into that situation where maybe you've already signed a contract and, you know, Mm -hmm. then they give you the creative brief and you're just like, oh, this is like not, not it, you know? Um, I think brands that allow creators to have the creative freedom are are always going to be brands that creators want to work with time and time again, because like we know our audience best, like I know what's, what they like and what they don't like. And if I'm forced to post something that they don't like, and you expect me to get a certain result and I know that's not going to happen, you know, like, of course I'm going to say something, but so many brands are like, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, so I think them having that, that flexibility is really important. And this kind of goes for both sides, whether it's, you know, creator, uh, talking about a brand or vice versa, treating a person like an actual human, you know, so many brands that I work with are like, you know, they think I'm like a robot and that I'm yeah. not an actual person behind here and, you know, expect very like unrealistic things that, you know, like at the end of the day, I would still like to be treated like a human with like feelings and like other <laughs> responsibilities. Um, and, and somehow that, that does get lost in the mix more often than you would think. So, yeah. um, just human decency, I don't know, it's pretty yeah. much kind of like the biggest <laughs> yeah. thing. And you would think, oh, that's just yeah. normal, but oh yeah, people would be shocked. It's not crazy. I know one Truly. thing we had, a uh, Alice Hampton. I was just thinking amazing. about that. Um, and she works with a lot of talent and brands both on both sides, really. And she said one of the best things you can do is just spell someone's name right. Like pay attention. Crazy. She said, you would not believe how many emails I get where my Crazy. talent's name is spelled wrong. And it's like, it's attention to detail. If you actually yeah. care about working with someone, you care enough to spell their name right. So it's like the you little things. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I yeah, I was just thinking about when Alice said that, yeah. but I yeah, so funny. Simple things. We are we're yeah. only asking simple things here. I know, right? I oh know. my gosh. That's all. Hilarious. So, Kristen, we talked a lot about all of the many hats that you wear with your coaching business, some of your products, your podcasts, your social media, your PR efforts. You're all over the place. <laughs> What are some tips that you can share for somebody who does wear so many hats in the, in that area? Like what are some time management skills or just skills to keep you sane? I, um, we had someone on one of our old, uh, podcast seasons that works, um, has a company called hustle sanely. And so how would you say you hustle in a sane way? (laughs) Um, hire a team. Yes. I have, uh, I think there's five or six of us. All of my, uh, people that I work with are independent contractors. Um, at this point I have, you know, like a podcast producer, I have two VAs, I have, um, someone who does all my video editing, you know, so there's, there's people who are way better at certain things than I am. And so I like to just let them do their thing, um, versus me spending hours doing what they can do in 15 minutes. Um, so outsourcing, I think is huge to, again, like keep your head on straight. Um, and then it also allows me to focus on things that are actually going to like bring in more, you know, revenue. It's going to grow our business a little bit more. So, um, anything that anyone else can do, I always try and outsource those things. Um, so I think that's very important, but also setting boundaries. I'm sure people have heard this a million times, but like, I don't think people really process it. Like you have to say no to opportunities that are not going to serve you without Mm -hmm. guilt. Um, you have to look at your calendar and realistically say, like, do I need to like cut my days shorter? Like, should I be letting people schedule uh, appointments whenever they want, you know, from 8am to 8pm? The answer is no. Uh, (laughs) You know, like, do you need to like, turn your phone off on the weekends? You know, like, 
especially as a creator, I think, who is expected to just, like, show up online all the time, I've just, like, stopped using my phone on weekends for the most part. Um, And and I didn't used to do that. Like, I would spend 24 hours a day on the phone. Um, And so it, it came to a point where I was like, I am so burnt out. I'm exhausted. I'm not hustling sanely by any means <laughs> um, and so again like I had to set those boundaries which I definitely think is very important um yeah I mean just honestly like protect your your mental health at all costs like I know it's scary when you're a business owner and you want to just like pour everything and in more into what you're doing but like you can't pour from an empty glass like we've all yeah. heard that and I think there's like nothing more true about being a business owner than that statement <laughs> yes even I mean Cassie and I both now have our own like businesses and consulting clients and things like that and we deal with that a lot but even in the corporate space like if you're working on a team within a brand like you do need to set you know boundaries and be able to make sure that you're doing the job that's in front of you the best way and I think we've had that conversation so many times on this podcast of just like setting boundaries you know going above and beyond in some areas, but also just being able to say no to something every now and then is very healthy. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I I literally like the way my schedule has changed in the last two years. I used to accept calls anytime, any place, like always I would book my whole days. Now I'm like no more than two calls in a day and they cannot exceed an hour each. (laughs) I don't work on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like I clock out by four every day because like, what is the point of me, you know, making money and and having this job if I'm not able to like go enjoy myself, you know? So I really try and like spend time outside of work as much as possible I think another really important thing is like having hobbies outside of work too um I typically in the last few years like my I would work and then I would like clock out of my computer and like go onto my phone yeah (laughs) so like you're never actually like doing anything outside of work especially when you own your own business and so you know I've started doing like more reading like pleasure reading not like business yeah, books yeah um I started going to like a pottery class you know like having so hobbies fun. outside of work is like so important for sure yeah. oh my gosh Absolutely. oh now I want to go to a pottery I know. Class. <laughs> it's so fun pottery. that's so fun it is but, so fun oh my gosh amazing um the next question that we had written down for you is what is next for you what do you see coming in the future 2023 I think this episode will air in like January or February what's coming up for you and your business so at this point in November right now um I am going through this feeling of I'm just really sick of Instagram I (laughs) realized like what are the days that I'm like depressed what are the days that I'm like really feeling discouraged and it's always days when I spend a lot of time on Instagram Um, and it's very scary for me because so many aspects of my job are based around like me spending time on Instagram, you know, like I need to know what's going on. I need to be, you know, getting interaction on my posts. So that means I have to spend time engaging. I have all my students talking to me about Instagram, you know, like everything revolves around Instagram. Um, but it's just been really a tough place to be in the last few months. I'm sure most people listening would definitely agree with that. Um, so I am actually trying to shift to spend more time on other platforms, Mm -hmm. um, and spend more time just again, like focusing on other things, you know, spending no more than like 30 minutes a day on Instagram. Um, I want to almost kind of shift myself to be less of an influencer and more of a coach, because I think I'll be, I'll feel a lot less pressure about post-performance when my income shifts to be more coaching versus Mm -hmm. influencing. So that's kind of my goal for, for 2023. I want to just like be less discouraged about social media. Um, and I, I think I've got a good plan to make that happen, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I love that. We'll have to check in with you too later on (laughs) and see if that all worked out the way it should. I'm sure. I hope so. (laughs) I'm the same way. I felt so discouraged by just it in general. And I'm like redoing my house now, even just being on Pinterest. I'm like, oh, my house to look like like, I know this comparison stuff all the time. And it's just so draining. So it is totally, totally understand. Yeah. (laughs) 
Yes. Well, Kristen, we are so sad to be coming to the end of this conversation today. We'll check back in with you at a later time, like we said, just to see how everything's going in your life and business. But before we close out today, we would love to ask a question. We ask all of our guests, but what do you know now that you wish you knew early on in your career? Um, I would probably say that like you are the only one that's going to like decide how successful you are. Yeah. Um, I think for me, like, especially in my other business, like I relied on so many other people to like, you know, do things and make things happen for me. And at the end of the day, like I always ended up having to do the things that I needed to, you know, do yeah. to make things happen. Um, so I think at the end of the day, like, even if you have a team, like you're the one managing that team, you know, like you as, as a business owner are always going to be in charge of your success. Um, so yeah, I, I would probably say that. That's, so good. That's a good one. Yeah. It sounds very similar. <laughs> we had, uh, someone from a past season who shared something very similar and it's such a good reminder because again going back to social media and we watch all of these people and how they define success for themselves and we're always comparing we're like we're, well our success doesn't look like this so I'm not successful and that's so not true and so right. it's such a good reminder just to get off the platforms get off LinkedIn even from time to time and not compare your journey to someone else's because you're on this path for a reason and it'll all make sense at some point but just <laughs> be there for the long haul and and keep going. So I love it. Bad. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Well, we are at the end. So where can everybody find you follow along with what you're doing? I know you're on LinkedIn, you're on all the social media platforms. Let us know where we can find you. So on pretty much every hand, uh, platform, my handle is K-B-O-U-S-Q, K-Boost. Um, on LinkedIn, it's just Kristen Busquet. Um, I, again, I'm spending so much more time on LinkedIn and on Twitter. So if you yeah. want to reach me, send me a message there. Yes. <laughs> Especially with my like upcoming Instagram hiatus that I'm planning, I will Perfect. hopefully not be available there. I love it. Amazing. Yes. Well, we'll put everything in the show notes, but thank you so much for joining us. This was a great conversation and just really fun to hear what you're you're up to and and the behind the scenes and everything there so thank you again yeah we'll be yes. cheering you on and paying attention to everything you have going on and super excited to see all of your offerings develop but make sure to check out Kristen on all of those platforms How good was that? My favorite moment of this podcast was Kristen's vulnerability and sharing that social media is hard. And for a lot of us, it's our jobs. So how do we maintain stamina and creativity and drive for these platforms without burning out? I know I certainly feel that way right now, and it is tough. <laughs> Your girl cannot even keep up on Instagram sometimes. We'd love to hear how you feel about that too. Let us know on LinkedIn or send us a DM on Instagram at Marketing Happy Hour. And don't forget to rate and subscribe the show. It means a lot to us. Thanks for joining us this week. What a treat to have Kristen on the show with us. We hope you have a fantastic rest of your week and we'll see you next time.